Good morning, Good morning, everyone. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? We're mm-hmm. waiting for our people to come on live with us. Uh, there we go. We're doing it in our hands today. Yeah. So there's no one on here yet. That's all right. Let me get this ready. All right. Go ahead and get that ready. Let me go ahead. And, oh, hi. We have one person on, Lindsay. Mm-hmm. All right. Hi. Who's that from, Lindsay? Goodness. Uh, Amy Devon. <laughs> hi, Amy Devon. Hold on. We're going to try to fix this. Goodness gracious, I am going to try to put this on here real quick. We did not do this early enough. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Please excuse. There we go. There we go. Hello from Dom and Miranda. Hi, guys. How you Hi. doing? Good morning. Oh, we're starting to get people on. That's awesome. Good morning. Uh, Lindsay, can you... Yeah. I think if you go like that, we can see... Mm-hmm. I got who's, it. Who's, go ahead. And Lindsay's back today. Yay! Mm-hmm. All of you guys that missed her on Friday. <laughs> or yeah. yeah. Boy, they were missing her. Oh. Um, <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm seeing all the people Ray start to come Hi. hi. guys. How are you doing? Hello. So as you're coming in, and Lindsay, you say hi to people as I'm getting the supplies ready for you. So today, if you don't have watercolor paint... Hopefully you figured out a way to make your own. So you'll just need watercolor paint. Lindsay and I are going to be sharing that today. If you have a box of crayons, that's great. If you have more than one artist in your room, you need one box for each artist. If not, you're gonna have to share. So your black crayon's going to be very important. If you don't have a black crayon, you can use a black color pencil. Anything that has a wax to it. So I'm trying to get your supplies ready for you. If you don't have crayons or <laughs> say hi to everybody. I know, I, I, someone said, is it bad that mom looks forward to this time more than her son's <laughs> four-year-olds are ready? <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Olivia and Avery, hi. Hi, guys. How you doing? So we're going to do the pledge real quick, and we'll talk to you about supplies a little bit more because I want to do the pledge every day. It's very important. So we're just going to stand up right in here and do the pledge. You ready? Lindsay, why don't you do it today? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Awesome. Thanks for doing that, Lindsay. Okay, so today we are going to, again, start, and I'm sure everybody is coming on here now. Hi, guys. Who else is on? No one else. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi, Avery. Hi, guys. Oh, uh, all right. Hi, Mom. How you doing? Hi, guys. Oh, the tissues are washing. Good, good, good. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started because a lot of people are not watching us live. A lot of people are watching us after. And that might be a good thing. Like today, as we're doing this assignment. Hi, Sydney. That's great. As we're doing this assignment, you might want to go back and rewatch and redo. And that's okay, isn't it, Lindsay? Mm-hmm. So you might just want to keep on watching us and then see how we do it. And then when we're done, you can go back and redo or finish your piece. Um, So I have this piece is what we're going to be doing today. You can see my paper is curved now. So what I need to do with this and what you're going to need to do with yours at the end is lay it in some books so it will flatten out. Um, you could use a box, books, anything heavy, anything heavy to flatten out your masterpiece. So I'm going to turn the camera this way. We're going to look down and we're going to get started. So I need everyone to do, I do this, Lindsay? Yeah. Go. There's the hallway. No, Our, you flipped it. So you need to turn it the other way. No. Cause so they can see, right? No, no. It's- oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look, Lindsay, Lindsay keeps me in check. Oh, hold on. I'm going to have to do it. Guys, sorry about this. We are ever evolving, ever working with this. Oh, goodness. Guys, you just got to grant me a little grace. How are we doing, Lindsay? Oh, it's good enough. Siri, Siri tried to ask me if I wanted help. <laughs> no help. I need a little help with this arm, though, sometimes. Oh, goodness. Okay, so, now, Lindsay. Okay, you need to focus um, it in more a little bit. How's that looking, Linz? Uh, you know, the video is just a little bit slowed down, so. Okay. Ethan Leonard says hello. Hi, Hi Ethan. Ethan. Oh, he That's is so good. awesome. I love it. That's okay, so guys, again, today you want to start with your pencil. As always, you're going to need your ruler. <clears throat> We're going to work on perspective today. Hi, Grant. 
Thank you for drawing with us this morning. Oh, Grant's here. Awesome. Yes, Lindsay, keep on saying <laughs> hi to everybody. I'm going to straighten that up a little bit. So the best paper that you can use for this today would be a thicker paper. If you only have copy paper, you're going to have to give your paint some time to dry in between washes because remember we showed last week how holy hi, hi tishes hi ellen miles hi sydney oh Lindsay's saying hi to everyone so um on here this is what we're going to try to create and we're going to try to put things back in space space is an element of art and we're going to use perspective perspective is a principle of design actually it's part of a principle of design and what uh what perspective does is it moves things back in space and basically you're keeping things in proportion or the way that things are with each other and then we're going to also talk about gradation and harmony and we'll talk a lot about that today so if you don't have a white color pencil or a white crayon that's okay you could use yellow so let's go ahead and get our papers out. Lindsay, why don't you get your paper out? Can mm -hmm. we see my whole paper? Let's yep. see. I'm going to move it up just, just a smidge. Like a smidge yeah, more so you guys can see. Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. That looks good. Okay. So, everybody get your pencil. I hope you're all ready. Everybody get your. What kind of paintbrush do we need? Anything. Any paintbrush. So, today you can see I'm using old. Just run-of-the-mill house, just paintbrushes that I had at the house. And they aren't pretty to look at because you can see I've painted a lot with them. You could have a big one for big areas. You could have a small one for small. If you don't have a small paintbrush, you can use a Q-tip instead. Mm -hmm. um, we noticed that that worked pretty well. I was saying, um, if you guys have any makeup brushes that you don't use, because I know I have a bunch of makeup brushes I don't use, those could be used for this as well. Right. And you guys... Just getting that, or a sponge, you could use a sponge, mm -hmm. torn up. Um, you could use the paintbrush that actually comes with your set, which, I mean, any way we can get you painting today. That's what we're worried about. And again, like I said, if you, are there any more questions, Lindsay? No. Okay, great. All right, guys, so we're going to take a ruler. Actually, we're going to find the middle of our paper. So we are going to do that pretty much every time. So again, you're looking at your top and your bottom and you're trying to find your middle and you're going to place a dot there. That's really important. Today, that dot is going to be right there in the middle of our paper. Now, what I want you to do is kind of go up a little bit higher than that first dot, like an inch, or you could take your ruler and move up one more and place a dot above that. Now, <clears throat> normally when we are doing a vanishing point or a perspective drawing like this one right here that we're going to go back in space. You can see my tablecloth looks like it's going back in space. That's what we want to kind of get to. Well, tablecloths sit on tables and that's not your, your end all. So we're going to have to do a little bit of a racing. So I really want you to use your ghost lines on this. Draw a light. Draw a light. All right. What? what, what? Else? I think there was one right there. No, they asked what paintbrushes do we need. Okay. So what I want you to do is put your dot in the center. Then I want you to put a dot right here. Again, I have dogs and cats in this house. So if you hear things, that's life. Now, we're going to play a little game of dot to dot. Okay. So on the bottom of your paper, right down here, I'm going to put a dot in the corner right here. Right there in the corner. Then... I'm going to move over like an inch and look, I'm going to use my finger for my inch and then I'm just going to repeat that making dots going all the way across like this. And if my other dot doesn't end up on the other side, it doesn't matter because we're just going to play dot to dot. So you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six dots on the dot bottom and you want to kind of keep them equal. They don't have to be perfect, guys. They really don't. So I'm going to wait for a minute while you're placing your dots. Look, see how this one does not match this side? That's okay. That's okay. It does not need to match. Not too 
And then Lindsay, no, that looks pretty good. Uh, you might m want to move those out and make them wider, Lindsay. Okay. Stop for a second, let people see. So Lindsay put on this many dots. So she's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That might be too many because the closer things are to you, again, in space, the more that they're, they're going to be bigger, right? So she might want to eliminate like this dot right here, Lindsay, okay. that dot there. I'm just showing you. And just make that now. She's only got one, two, three, four, five dots. That's much better, okay. Lindsay. And actually, that looks good because you've got one in the middle. That looks nice. Yes. Okay. So doing that, you can... Hi, Brad. Oh, uh, Ricky. Hi, the Bradley family. Hi, guys. All right. So you're trying to place your dots on the bottom. And I actually might move. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not. Now you're going to take your ruler and on your paper, you're going to go up a little bit more than what you would think. And then they're going to keep on getting smaller as they go back. Does that make sense, guys? So we're going to try to create space, it's which is, hi. hi guys, which is an element of art. So as you go through, watch like this, you're going to start and do a dot right here. And it's a little bit more than an inch. Then I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to find where it belongs on my paper. And I'm going to go across. And I'm going to place a dot there on the other side. So that I can make that even. And then as I go up, this one's going to be a little bit smaller. So look, this one's bigger. This one's getting a little bit smaller. And I'll wait for you guys. And then I'm going to place... I don't know if they can see that now. I'm going to twist that. Sorry, guys. I don't Are you know. saying the space here is smaller between the lines? I'm confused. Okay, so yes. As we go back, the first line is going to be the biggest, Lindsay. Okay. And then as we go back, we're going to make them smaller. And I've got to get this to straighten out a little bit. There we go. Okay. So here we go. We're placing a dot here. So this is going to be my biggest space. Does that make sense, Lindsay? Mm -hmm. And actually, if you want to, guys, with your pencil, watch. You can go ahead and draw a line there lightly right now and draw your line right there lightly. And it should be a parallel line to the bottom of your page. Next, you want your next line just to be a little bit smaller. Again, taking your ruler, following that line before, drawing a line up. There we go. And again, draw a light till you get it right. Now, just make it a little Someone bit. Ask what we're drawing in the o family. Hi, we're drawing a nice cup of coffee or tea or whatever hot cocoa in this cold morning. This is what we're going to be drawing hi, today. Hi, And we are, hi, the Press family. And so we are going to create, uh, we're, <laughs> I have a friend that, oh goodness. Um, <laughs> we are going to create or, I'm sorry, proportion and perspective by going back so that this lays down so this table looks like it's laying, tablecloth looks like it's laying down. And so we're going to create space by using horizontal lines. And again, remember, the higher they go up on the page, the smaller they're going to be. So I've got a big line here or a big space here, a smaller space here. Now watch, I'm going to even make it smaller now but not by too much. You don't want to go big than little. So look, you can see on my final, I even have a space where you can't see it. So I've got big, smaller, smaller, smallest, and the smallest in back. Okay. So again, taking your ruler or straight edge, whatever you have at home, again, trying to make these lines look like they're parallel to the bottom of your page. There we Hi, go. Mom. Oh, Nani. Hi. No, my mom was here. Oh, hi, Laura. <laughs> we love you, honey. Hi. So as we go back, we're going to go smaller again. So look, I've got this kind of space here, so I'm almost making it half. And we're almost to our center dot. So we're almost to the middle of our paper. And again, we're going to make this smaller by using our ruler. And actually, I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller right there. So there we go. So now I've got four lines and I might want to look through and see 
Do they look parallel? And fix up if they don't while you guys are working. I'm just going to fix up those lines because it's really important that in perspective, you have basically three lines. Or actually, in one point perspective, you actually just have two lines. You have lines that are horizontal. And then you have lines that go back to the vanishing point, which is the dot that we put back up here. So we could even label this VP for vanishing point. And I'll zoom in on that if you need to. So and so, can you slow down? Sure, and absolutely. Then Sydney and Lauren. Hi, Hi Sydney. Hi, Lauren. Yeah, I'm going to go through and just straighten up my parallel lines right now. So what I'm doing is just straightening up my parallel lines. And basically, we're going to play dot to dot today. And again, we want things to go back in space. Space is a element or an element of art. That's what makes art look good. And we're going to go up above our center line, but we will be erasing later. So this next line that we're going to be making, you don't really need to worry about it because if it goes above your center line, we're going to erase it anyway, but I still want you to have it there for practice. So again, smaller even yet there. And again, tablecloths lay on tables. So I'm just going to draw that little line there. And then that would be my last line right there. And we'll wait for people to catch up. <laughs> Why does my line does look one, wonky? Does this one look weird to you? Or I'm, no. Okay. Uh, so look, Lindsay's doing a nice job too. I just wanted to show you Lindsay's right here. She's drawing really lightly, which is nice. Nice, nice. So important. Mm -hmm. And I know young artists, it's hard for you to draw Hi, light. Hi, Emerson. Hi, Emerson. Hi, Sydney. Hi, Lauren. Can you slow down? Yes, we're slowing down. Obviously, we're going to mm -hmm. slow down. Now, what we're going to do next while we're waiting for people to slow down is we're going to go ahead and plot some lines to go out. And actually, I think we just might, I'm going to look at something really quickly while you guys are working. I just want to see something really quickly. I'm just checking my intentions here. I think we could do that. I think we could do that. Yeah, I do. I think that's going to work. All right. <laughs> you and I are both talking to <laughs> I know. Now. Hey, good artists talk to themselves. Oh, all right. Are we all ready to move on? Everybody ready to move on? Let's see. Give me a big thumbs up if you're ready to move on. Looks like. Yeah. Let's see. You're getting thumbs up. I'm getting thumbs up. Good. All right, guys. So I want you to erase the center dot right now. Don't erase it all the way, but just kind of get rid of it. And we're going to play a fun little game of dot to dot. That's it. We're going to play a fun little should game. Should I add another line to mine or no? Nope, you're fine. Okay. So Lindsay asked, should she add another line to this? She's erased her center line, and she needs to write VP here. I want you all to write VP. That's not for the vice president of the United States. That's <laughs> called the vanishing point. The vanishing point is where you no longer can see things. So, like, say you go outside, Lindsay, mm -hmm. and you can see all the way out. And then as far as your eye can see is the vanishing point. Yeah. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? That's where things go away. So, we're going to put our vanishing point above our actual center dot right here. And we're going to be erasing some of the stuff. So... Please draw a light until you get it right. So we're going to play dot to dot. Now remember, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to hold my ruler or my straight edge differently than you. Please know that. Okay, so let's just go ahead and have some fun. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to take our vanishing point, and we're going to start here, and we're going to set our intentions, and we're going to go to our first line right here, and we're just going to draw a line to that. And actually, I'm going to move mine to the middle. I, I want everyone, yep. Yeah, just a little bit more like that. Perfect. Draw a line straight down and go to that dot that you had. I'm just going to move those over a little bit more. Do, do. Yep, yep. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. So that's what I did. And I'm kind of rechecking my bottom for a minute because I moved mine over a little bit. There we go. Because again, balance, guys. Remember when we were talking about balance? If you want to, you know, 
make those look like they're balanced now you can you want that first line coming down right at you that's mm -hmm. going to give you some nice so balance I'm slow down just a bit. sure sure so that first line we're going to slow down just a minute yep and all we're doing is just dot to dot and so we're just going to wait for everyone and let me tell you, perspective is fun because it is a way that you as an artist can put things back in space. And perspective is something that you usually don't learn until about fifth grade. Fourth grade, sometimes you may do a little bit of perspective. Um, just depending on your teacher, uh, perspective can be frustrating sometimes, but one point perspective's fun. It is. It's a lot of fun. Is there anybody on there texting mm -mm. or saying? I already answered that. All right. Okay, so as you go through, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go dot to dot again. So we're going to find our vanishing point. I'm going to take my ruler. Again, my ruler, your ruler should be on this side if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, you're going to go on this side. Again, you're going to hold that nice pressure down on your ruler. You're going to draw a light line because we're going to erase these back lines. So... You're going to just draw a light line back. And you can see it almost makes a triangle, doesn't, Lindsay? Mm -hmm. And you a don't, look, triangle? I missed my, look, see how I missed my point there? I'm fine. No big deal. I'm totally fine that I missed my point there. Yep, there's two people that said slow down. Yep, guys, we will slow down. While we're slowing down, what I would like to talk to you too about today is the media that we're going to be using. So if you don't have access to anything that's waxy, such as color pencils or crayons, Sharpie marker would be your next bet. Because Sharpie marker is permanent and it will allow you to paint with uh, watercolor over it. I would not suggest Crayola markers because mm -hmm. they're water-based and they're going to bleed will run, and they will run and they'll ruin it. Now, if you only have one black crayon in your household, then what I would suggest to you is that you either share it or you could pick a different color. You could pick uh, purple. You could pick navy blue. You could pick uh, a dark color. Mm -hmm. You could even use brown. Brown's a neutral. Yeah. You could use gray if you have in your color box. So... One of you could have gray, one of you could have brown, one of you could have black. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on over and, again, doing our dot to dot, drawing our lines. And don't worry if they overlap in the end because we're going to erase all those. So, again, drawing out. And... What's my favorite type of art? Yep. What we do? And then I'm going to go ahead... And I'm not going to do my corner dot there. I'm going to just go up to here to this one right here on this first line and draw a line. And I'll wait for you and I'll redo that line. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you're going to go to this line dot right here. You're going to go back to your vanishing point. You're going to take your ruler. If you're right-handed, you're going to lay it right here. And you're going to go back. So I didn't go to that corner dot because I figured out that that would be too skinny. Let me show you. That would look too skinny right there. So I'm going to get rid of that skinny one in the corner. If you did that and it doesn't look like it should be a table, like this looks a little thin for me here, I could actually redraw that if I wanted to and move it over. But I'm not going to because it'll be fine. So we're going to go up the side and go back to the vanishing point doing dot to dots till we get to our vanishing point. But I'm going to wait for you guys. If you need me to, is everybody ready to move on? Show me thumbs up if you're ready to move on. Mm. All right, I think we're ready to move on. Mm -hmm, yep, okay, guys. So now we're going to go from this dot back to our vanishing point again. Again, I'm doing mine left handed, so it should look opposite from you. Holding your ruler in place, drawing back to that dot. Again, we're erasing everything above our center dot that should lightly be there that will all go bye-bye <laughs> you're not going to see it because a tablecloth you would not see the vanishing point to because it would wrap over the table if that makes sense to you so again we're going to go up here we're going to take our ruler we're going to draw a line and we're going to do this to all our lines again drawing light till you get it right it's okay if they overlap at the top. Right yes. Here. Yeah, like right here. Look, I'm getting this little cluster. That's fine. 
and I'm going to wait for a minute and I'm going to talk about media. So today is a multimedia project, which you will need different types of media. What is media, Lindsay? Media is the supplies you use for art. Or the tools. Yeah, the tools. Absolutely. The tools that you use for art. So if we were just using pencil today, it would be just using one medium. So it's not my shirt size. I'm not using a medium shirt. Um, <laughs> I'm using a medium, which is a tool and art. So if we were just using pencil today, I would say we are going to use one medium. Media is the plural of medium, and that is what we're doing today. We're using crayons, watercolor, pencils. Mm -hmm. So we're creating a multimedia project. So if you want to talk like an artist, that's a really good way to get somebody's attention. <laughs> Again, we're going to go all the way back to that vanishing point. Hi, Audrey. If you're just tuning in, you might want to just watch and see what we're doing today. And then again, we're doing the same thing all the way to the back. To the real quick. All right. And so Lindsay's got hers almost done right here. So you can kind of see ooh, how hers is going back in space right now. Looking really cool. Very cool. She went to the restroom real quick. She'll be right back. And again, we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Can you kind of see that going back in space, guys? Anybody seeing that go back in space? Is anyone getting the same look that I'm getting? I hope you are. Again, we're going to go over here and do the same thing to the left side that we did to the right side. Again, just playing dot to dot. It's a lot of fun. Going back to space. Nice job. Oh, I will slow down. Yes, Mrs. Tish, I will slow down. Sure. So as we're slowing down, don't worry if you can't get this the first time. And it's okay if you can't get this the first time. This is kind of tricky, but it's a lot of fun. And really, like I said, this is like our challenge for the week. Tomorrow's assignment, we're going to do something really cute. We're going to make this spring... Right here, we're going to make the spring really vibrant, uh, fun project with chicks and eggs tomorrow. And this will be a lot of fun. Again, I'm doing projects that will challenge you. I'm also doing projects that are a lot of fun that you can have some success with. And then I'm doing some projects that you might have some difficulty with, and that's okay. So again, I'm going to take this line, and we're going to go all the way up. So if you're moving ahead on me, just keep on going back to the vanishing point. There we go. And Lindsay, can you see if there's any mm -hmm. comments? Someone said slow down. Yep. All right. Okay, so there we go. And I will actually, there we go, draw my line. Oh, huh? <laughs> I didn't go on my ruler by accident. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we draw light. Yeah, that's why we draw light. Okay, so friends, we're just gonna go up the sides using our ruler slowly. Lindsay, will you check and see? No, okay, great. Oh, look how cool that looks, Lindsay. Isn't mm -hmm. that cool? I love it. It's, can you see yours going back in space, Lindsay? Yeah. I totally can. So again, going back to that vanishing point for each one. I used to love doing this when I was little. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yep. And you know what? So See, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you oh, for giving us this Yes, absolutely. We, love doing, we love doing this with you guys. And again, I know that some people might not be on here live right now. And that's okay. Because actually, sometimes it's better just to watch this video afterwards. Because we've had a lot of people watch videos mm -hmm. after the fact. So that you can pause it. And you can stop it. And again, you know, we might go a little bit too fast. And you might just want to watch how we do it. And then go back and revisit where you need to finish. So now I'm starting to see this really go back in space. Mm -hmm. Again, using my vanishing point, going back to my line, and then that one I'm not even, yeah, nope, that one I'm not going to do. Well, yeah, I could do that just to show you, but you don't even need that line because we're going to erase it later. So... <laughs> Whatever. Oh, look. See, look. I made a bad line there. <laughs> That's what I did. Don't uh -huh. say but I don't even need that. So I wonder why. Yeah, I goofed. Oh, well. There we go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. So 
now what we need to do is we need to find our center dot. Lindsay, can you find your center dot? Yes, ma'am. Hopefully you did not erase your center dot, guys. You told us to erase it earlier. I know, I said erase oh. it, but still be, make oh, it visible. Okay. If you can't, just re-find your center again. Everybody can do that. And then what and I- it should be right under your vanishing point. Yes, excellent. So. And so what we're gonna do, while people are finishing up their lines, you can watch this in a moment. We're gonna draw a horizontal line on that vanishing point line, or I mean on that center line. Gosh. Feels like a Monday. <laughs> oh, we're going to take there and draw a line there. And guess what, guys? You're going to erase everything above that. That's why I said draw a light till you get it right. Because on here, if this was a road, if this was on the ground, if this was like looking up a building, you would want to keep all that. But this is a tablecloth that actually would wrap around a table and go down the side of a table. So you would not have a vanishing point that you would see on that. So we wanna get rid of that. All right, so lots of erasing going on and I'll wait for you guys to erase on that and that looks pretty good. There we go, let me see Lindsay's. That looks great, Lindsay. Thank you. So Lindsay, the only thing you need to do here is just draw your line mm -hmm. right there. And that's it, that looks great. Again, erasing all of our lines. And there's a lot of eraser on my desk <laughs> or on my kitchen table. All right, guys. So now we're going to overlap and we're going to use shape to create form. So does everybody's table kind of look like that? Is everybody getting that perspective? If you're having trouble with this, Lindsay, I just want to show a quick fix to everyone. I'm going to keep this on your page. But if you're having problems with this and you're not able to do this, I'm going to keep this up there so you can see. If you're having problems with this and you can't get it go back to, in perspective, find your middle and you can just have fun making, take your ruler and just draw some fun, old-fashioned vertical lines, and I'm just using my ruler as my guide. So if that other part was giving you grief and you can't get it go back in space, that's fine. And you can do lines like this, and this will work just as well. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of making that checkerboard pattern. So you could do this instead if the other one is giving you grief. If you're like, oh, this is just giving me so much grief up here, you can do this instead. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll work. Look, it'll look just as good. It'll look just as good. So if you're having problems doing this, then here is an alternative solution for you that you can get pretty much the same effect. Granted, it won't go back in space as much, but that's okay. You can do that. All right, so let's start. Is everybody ready to start with a coffee mug or our mug or whatever we're going to make? <laughs> All right, so what we're going to have to do is get our mug and keep it in or on our tablecloth. If we draw it too high, it's going to fall off our table. Not going to look pretty. So what I would suggest to you is going down fairly low. And what I would like for you to do is draw a smiley face. Everybody draw a smiley face. And you want to make it about like halfway in between your top and your middle. So again, I am finding that. I'm gonna place it in the middle and I'm just gonna draw a smiley face. So I got this little smiley face guy. Again, I'm using my sketching lines there. Perfect like that. And I'm drawing right over my tablecloth. All right. Now, I want to take and I want to draw a line that is vertical. So I can go to the side of my paper again if you are right-handed, you're going to go like this and you're gonna move over like this. So I'm showing you what a right-handed person would do. And then you're gonna draw a line up. So I'm doing this right-handed for you right now. Straight up vertical that matches the side of your paper using parallel lines. And you wanna go above your tablecloth. If you're, or the center point. 
Again, on the left side, I want you to do the same thing. Move over. Again, I'm doing it right-handed. And I want you to draw a vertical line up. And it doesn't, you don't have to worry about where it's going to stop. Just like that. Once you get that done, you can, if you're ahead of everyone, you can erase all this in, on the inside because you don't need this anymore. I bet you're like, gosh, Miss Meyer, we did all that for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, lady? <laughs> well, to put things in perspective, you got to overlap. Layer. And you have to layer. You got to layer. You got to overlap. Overlapping is a thing that a lot of artists don't do. And you just got to do it. You just got to overlap. It creates so much space. It really does. And it looks really cool. It does look really cool. There we go. So again, we are drawing our two vertical lines up. And now it's kind of like we're looking down on our table. So sometimes we would draw a line like this. And again, when things are above the vanishing point, you should be drawing a line like this. But for today, we're just going to do another simple line like this. So here's this line. Set your intention. Feel that line right here. As you feel that line, you're going to feel the line again and try to make a line that would match that, that ellipse line. And we're going to make an ellipse on the top, which is basically a circle laying down. So we're just going to draw a happy and a sad face at the top, trying to touch both sides of our vertical lines that we made. Just like that. Oh, Lindsay, yours looks really good. I'm going to show you Lindsay's right there. Look at that. Nice, nice, Lindsay. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. So any extra lines that you had, you're going to take your eraser and erase. Nice, nice. Good job. Now, you can make your handle on your mug any way you want. You could make it square. You could make it... A heart shape you could make it like look like an ear oh um talking about ears uh why did van gogh become a painter does anyone know <laughs> because he didn't have an ear for music <laughs> he's one of my favorite artists i love him i had to tell a joke i had to tell a joke <laughs> all right nobody likes my joke okay van gogh i love him this kind of reminds me of Andy Warhol's soup can right there. Oh, so, I agree, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they do like my joke. Good. <laughs> Thank you. I know. Okay. So, guys, over here, if you want to, you're going to start out. I'm going to set my intentions. I'm going to make mine look like a heart today. I made mine look like a letter C backwards the other day. You can put it on the left side. You can put it on the right side. You can put it on any side you want. You can make it any way you want, too. All right, they're liking our joke. Thank you, guys. All right. So on this side, I'm just going to go ahead and make like a half of a heart or an ear. Ha <laughs> get it? Oh, Van Gogh, what were you thinking? <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> All right. Now, I want to kind of keep that part of my table there so I can see that. On my other one, you can see I kind of went up a little bit higher so I didn't have to deal with my table there. Today, I am having to deal with my table. I'm putting my... Uh, mug more into my table and that's okay. It's going to be a challenge for me, but I like challenges. I love challenges. I love taking risks. And again, you're going to do another one right beside Someone it. Asked to see the finished copy. Sure. Here's your finished copy. And I'm going to really beg you to do a different design in your coffee than I do. Now, if you want to do the same cloth, and usually I never use my pencil eraser, but today I am. There we go. What did you erase? I erased the lines in between. Oh. So I, your coffee mug's going to be in front of your tablecloth. So I'm going to erase inside of that. Now, most of us don't drink coffee with a saucer. Mm -hmm. But I think for the fun of it, we're going to make a saucer today. So again, seeing this ellipse that we have right here that we've started... I'm going to draw another lips in front of it that kind of acts like it. And I'm going to show my intentions and I'm going to draw an ellipse like this and I'm going to have it go out like that. And again, wide, wide, wide. And I'm going to bring it up a little bit more and then I'm just going to curve it around and have it go back. And you may have to rework this and it almost looks like a hat. You guys can make hats this way too. 
See how that could turn into a hat, a top hat, guys? Oh, yeah, I see it. Do you see the top hat, Lindsay? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you kind of want it to wrap around like we did our top ellipse here. You want to do like a sad face that you would not actually go through because your coffee mug would be in the way. But I'm going to show you if you're having some problems, you can do, you can go through your coffee mug and that's fine and just erase that. But you can see how we're going to make that, uh, what is that called again? The saucer. If you don't want to do the saucer, you don't have to. If that's like too much for you and you think that it's looking a little crazy, um, you don't have to do that. And again, everything that you do, you need to erase. And then now when you get to this point, you should have a, and here's the final again. There's the final. And then, so if you don't want to do the saucer, that's fine. So now I want you guys to do one more thing. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a sad face right here so that we can see wh what kind of liquid you're going to have in your mug. And you can paint that later. So, you know, in mine, I have coffee. You could have hot cocoa. And again, that's going to give us an idea of, that there's actually liquid in our mug. You now can take a couple moments and decorate your mug any way you want. Uh, Lindsay, any way you want. I would like to see some originality here. So, you know, for me, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to do what I did originally just by doing triangles. And again, have fun with whatever you want to do here. Creating your own mug idea. You could put hearts all over it. You could do... Uh, squares you could do any design you want mine I kind of focused on triangles I hadn't used triangles that much again if you just want to do straight lines going up and down using a ruler that'd be awesome if you want to do polka dots that'd be great um mom give some ideas for us uh for mm -hmm. people uh you could use oh my goodness mom are you giving me any ideas Let's see. Nope, mom's not giving me any ideas. Um, oh my goodness. I'm doing flowers. Oh, Lindsay's going to use flowers on hers. Think about the coffee mugs that you have in your house. You know, granted, you probably want to keep it with, as a design element here. Um, again, anything goes. Creativity has no boundaries and it's limitless. Trust me, limitless. You don't have to draw what I'm drawing. Again. When, but now look, when you are going to draw something around your mug, you want to keep with that ellipse. So look, if I'm going to draw a line on the top, I, I practice that ellipse line. I don't want to draw a straight line across because then it doesn't go back in space. And we're turning this into a form. So this is going to become 3D. So if I draw a straight line, look what happens. Your eye kind of goes, what is that? That looks really weird or strange. So those lines need to follow the curves that you already have in place at the top and the bottom of the mug that you're creating. Again, and if you're doing like, you know, polka dots. You're doing fine. Mom, thanks mom, you're doing fine. <laughs> All right. All right, so you can see the top here. I'm just gonna repeat my triangle pattern and I'm just gonna go through and just make triangles over and over on the top. And again, you should be decorating your mug right now any way you want to. I really love the way that uh, we have one of our students, Henry, mm -hmm. who keeps on doing this kind of pattern right here, you know, the checkerboard pattern, and he's doing it in everything, and I love that he has that. It's almost becoming his signature. And let's talk about signatures while we're while I'm waiting for you to decorate your mug. And if you decorate your mug, you could even decorate your, uh, I keep on forgetting, saucer. <laughs> if you want to decorate your saucer, you can or you can keep it just plain. Um, you know, if you want to decorate it, go for it. If you don't want to decorate it, don't. Again, this is where you can be unique and add extras if you want to. Or you don't have to add extras. So... It's up to you. It's where you can put your personality into your work. Absolutely. Make it more of your own. Absolutely. So it's all about uniqueness and creativity. So you don't have to do what I'm doing. 
Again, create your saucer any way you want. You can do whatever you want for your saucer. Again, I'm making mine go back in space to sit down. And that's all I'm gonna do on my saucer. And really, that's all I'm gonna do on my mug. I might do a little bit more on my arm or my handle, more triangles. I would try to keep with the same theme, if you can. So and then, instead of, I made a Spider-Man cup. I, love, I that. love that. I cannot wait to see that. You guys, you got to post these online. I want to see all your artwork. I want to look at them. Oh, that's very cool. Hearts, Mom, that's great. Yep, yep. I love it. So, we are basically done drawing at this point, unless you want to go, like, and make intentions for your background. For your background, I use polka dots. If you want to use polka dots with me, you can. Again, do you have to use polka dots? No, you don't. No, ma'am. No, you don't. You don't have to use polka dots. Absolutely not. You can make it whatever you want. But for me, I'm going to keep it as polka dots. And if you are young, you might want to draw along with me and do the polka dots. If you're a little bit older, you might want to think outside the box. Let me show you Lindsay's really quickly to show you how different hers is from mine. I love this. Look, same idea, same concept, totally different. Ooh, that looks kind of like a snake coil. Mm -hmm. I love that, Lindsay. Thank you. Very cool. So, Lindsay, that's nice. And you know what, Lindsay, on your flowers here, mm -hmm. you might want to add some that you just see like going off to the okay. side. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That wrap around to give us that 3D look. A lot of people forget to do that, and that's totally fine. Again, I'm just offering tips. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. I mean, but yeah, it makes sense. So. Okay, so does anybody else need more time designing their cup? Okay, it looks like we're all okay. If anybody needs... Oh, very nice, Lindsay. Thanks, oh, Nani. Thank you, Nani. All right, so this is where you're going to need your black crayon. If you don't have a black crayon, you can always use a black color pencil. Anything that has wax. If you don't have a wax crayon or a wax color pencil, gosh, I don't like the idea of this, but you could use oil pastel. The only thing about oil pastel that scares me, Lindsay, is it smears. Mm -hmm. It's oil paint in a stick. And so when your hands are on there and you're moving it across your paper, you can't have your hands on there. If you're using oil pastel, you actually have to keep your hand off that paper or you're going to smear it everywhere and you're going to end up with a very, very sad artist. Oil pastel is tricky and we can talk about it later, but if you are only have oil pastels and that's all you've got, I'd rather you use a Sharpie instead today, to be quite honest. Because oil pastels can smear. Unless you're like, I got this. I can use an oil pastel. I'm good. Then great. But oil pastel is just basically oil paint and heat. Your hand is 98.6 degrees. Your table that you're working on is 70 degrees. 20 degrees difference. You're smearing your hand across. You're going to melt that oil pastel. And you're going to have a very, very messy messy Nani piece of art. said put the heat from coming off the cup oh we will oh yeah mom you're right okay we'll draw those in i wasn't going to draw on the heat coming off the cup i was just going to use my very good mom thank you so at the end of this real quick go ahead and draw some wavy lines you've had practice with that on friday if you were with me don't have them touch the cup don't have them go in the cup and then i just did two on one side like this, and then I did two on the other side that kind of match. They don't need to match against their wavy lines, and then I did one up the middle like that. Perfect. Thanks, Mom, for that. There we go, and we've got our, like, heat coming off our cup. Perfect, and they don't have to be perfect like that. So now we are ready to get our waxy, or if we don't have a wax, Again, oil pastels, I've cautioned you on that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start. And if you're using your crayon, I would definitely use your ruler for your straight lines. And just go ahead and start drawing your crayon on there. Like so. And outlining. And this is protecting your 
paper. So what we're doing is we're just basically saying we don't want paint to go here. We just don't want paint to be here. So when we use our watercolor wash, we're gonna have that resist. It's called a resist. And that we're basically resisting our paper and we are actually making it where when we put our paint on our paper, it won't seep in to our paper and we can actually have our perspective. No, um we can actually have a resist, a resist. So now you can see as this is going on, so the wax will resist water. Water and wax don't mix. Water and oil don't mix. And so this is actually, yeah, Lindsay, so what were you going to say on that? I was just saying this is making the perspective of it. And yeah. so like with this, it keeps our lines and all of our hard work protected. So yes. That... Oh, very good. It keeps all of our lines and all of our hard work protective. I, I agree with you a billion percent on that, Lindsay. Yes. And so we're protecting that with that. And again, if you don't have a crayon, you can use a Sharpie. And if you only have one black crayon in your house, you might want to just let somebody use that crayon now. And then you can have, you can share, you know, sharing is so nice. You can always share or you could use brown or you could use gray or you could use purple. But I think the black looks really nice because that's going to create some contrast. Now, you cannot erase with crayons. So wherever your pencil lines are, you know, be careful because if you erase next to crayon, you're going to smudge it because, again, the eraser will have friction. Friction will cause heat. Heat will melt your crayon, and you're going to have a smear. So, you know, try to get your lines if you can. If not, no big deal. So now I've outlined my... I've outlined my, I'm trying to read comments. There you go. Mm -hmm. I've outlined my table and you can see, isn't that nice how that goes back in mm -hmm. space? Really nice how that goes back in space. So the next thing I would do after this is, I'm gonna move that over just to see, can you guys see that? All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is outline my coffee mug with, and then again, if it's a straight line, I'm gonna use my ruler again don't forget, use your ruler for straight lines. That's going to make you a better artist. It is. Using a ruler is going to make you a lot better artist. So hopefully you all are just right now using your crayon if you have one or your color pencil if you have one or your Sharpie. Please don't use Crayola marker. That's not going to protect you. Crayola wa marker is water-based. And I'm going to turn my paper to make it easier for me to draw this contour line. And when I get done, and you might have to share your white crayon today if you have a white crayon. If you don't have a white crayon, then that's okay. We can always, you know, it's fine. You don't have to have a white crayon, but we would like to create some contrast. How's it going, Lindsay? Good? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to go ahead and just start outlining everything else that I see that I've done with my pencil and get this nice coffee mug going. There we go. And then you might wanna pick your favorite color and we're gonna do some resist. Like I'm gonna make my table red and this is my fun little line that I call, it's called Double Juicy. <laughs> All my students that have me should know what Double Juicy is. Double Juicy is when you basically have two lines. Look, I just broke my crayon. Broken crayons still work. There we go, because I'm using a little bit of pressure. So I just took the side, and I'm going to take the other side and use it. So look, broken crayons work. Ta-da, and then I'm going to draw a line here line there perfect there we go again my new line is my new line and then if it's not like if you have pencil where you went by and you can get to it without touching the crayon try to erase it I'm using my pencil eraser there but now we've got all the outlines in so now 
we kind of want to do a double juicy. And let me show you what I'm talking about, double juicy. So what double juicy is while you're drawing yours in, because I know you guys need some more time. Um, I'm just going to show you. You might want to look up for just a second. I'm going to pick my red. And so we have that black line right here, right? Okay. So I have this black line right here. When I double juicy something, and this is a term I've made up. This is not, don't go look for this on a Wikipedia because I don't think it's going to be there. Double juicy for me is when a, another color is next to another color, but it's not like an Oreo cookie. It's like they're best friends and they're just like side by side. Mm -hmm. If you do it like this, this is wrong. That's like an Oreo cookie. You know, you got the black in the middle and you got the lines on each side. So look, you want to make it on one side. So pick your intention and put it on one side. So for the final on this, what I did was I went through and you can see my crayon there. So Lindsay, pick a crayon that you want. And basically, friends, what you can do now, watch, is you can outline. And I picked like this pinky color. And you're just going to double juicy on the inside. And I'm not using my ruler this time. And I'm really kind of pushing medium hard because I want this to resist my watercolor paint. Again, like Lindsay said, protecting what we just took a long time to draw on. And we don't want it to go away. And look, when I'm getting up to my coffee saucer, I am not going to draw a line right here. Why not, Lindsay? Why am I not going to draw a line right here? Because that's not the perspective. That's, the that's not saucer. the pattern. Yeah. That's not the pattern, right? So don't draw a line right there. And as you go through and do this, this will take a little bit of time to do, but you can do it very quickly. And you could be a little sloppy with this because you're going to paint over it and really no one's going to see this. And you're just trying to add a different color to your black so that it's going to create more variety. And it will draw more attention to it. Yes. And so again, you can see that I'm doing it on the inside of my tablecloth. If you don't want to do this part and you're like, oh, this is just way too much for me, then you might want to color in your coffee mug but and add some double juicy to that. So let me show you, like in my coffee mug, I used yellow because I thought, how fun would it be to have yellow against some blue? So inside my coffee mug, I did the double juicy right here with my yellow to add some light. So if you don't want to do that part and you just want to work on your coffee mug and you're like, I'm just going to take the table as is, that's fine. You can do that. But I'm just showing you what you can do on your coffee mug if you don't want to go through and do all of that on your table. Like that. So look, you can see I've added yellow really lightly. Also, this is fun where you can add white if you have a white crayon. White, you can, like, I'm going to put white in my uh, little holes right down here, my little half circles. I'm going to put some white in there. I'm not going to go through and be crazy about it. I'm just going really quick. And then maybe I'm going to put some white in between these triangles right here. Voila. And then on your white, this is really important for your steam. If you want to add some white to add contrast, just go and do that double juicy that I was talking about earlier. Add some double juicy there. Will you post this after? Yes, yes. I will post this after. I post every video afterwards so that you can stop and rewind and redo. Absolutely. And I was actually thinking about doing one assignment this week where I'm not live, but you guys let me know if you like the live. Um, I love being live with you guys. I love having this time with you, but it can be frustrating sometimes because I know I work at a much different pace than you and I try my best, but when I've only got Lindsay here <laughs> as my guide, I just made a mistake. That's all right. Lindsay, will you hop up? Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. Um, so again, I'm just going through and you don't have to be perfect on these lines that you're outlining. Please know that. Look how just I'm just doing it kind of funky and I'm just having fun with it. I'm not being really exacting because we're going to paint over that. So look again, Lindsay, I hope that can they see yours too? Look at Lindsay's. Look how pretty that is. You did a better job than me, girl. That mm -hmm. looks gorgeous. 
So, Lindsay, whatever you want to resist on here mm -hmm. on your mug, go ahead and do that. And then, Lindsay, you need to draw that in crayon right okay. here. And then you need black crayon up there. And then you need to put white next to it. So, again, you don't need to be exacting on these. And you don't have to do this part if you don't want to. This just makes it fun. It just makes it fun, exactly. So, again, I'm just going through. And you can see just having some fun with it again. What happens is these areas that I'm not getting with the paint, I mean with the crayon, are going to fill in with paint. And it's going to make it look really cool and it's going to have texture. So you might be like, Miss Meyer, that is so sloppy. Well, you're going to love the results of it later because it's going to look really texturized at the end. So again, if you want to be exacting, you can, but really my suggestion to you is just have fun with it and don't worry about it being perfect because again, this is just a double juicy. Your black is already exacting and this is just going to add some texture, which I love texture. Texture is just, you know, how texture things, is texture is the way things feel or look on a paper. So, so when I to see mine again. Uh -huh, yeah. There's Lindsay's. There's Lindsay's. Isn't that pretty? So, Lindsay, yep, you're doing great. You might want to do that line right there, too. See okay. that line? Yeah. So, I'm just going to put a little pencil line right there with just your crayon right there. And you might want to green that up right there. It looks good. Thank you. All right. So, as we're going through, um, and as you go back, your lines are going to get lighter and softer, too, if you want to. Where did I put my green? Uh, you can borrow mine. See? We're sharing. <laughs> We're sharing. Again, the more resist you have, the better it's going to look. The more resist, which is your wax, whatever you're using for your wax, the more resist you have, the better it's going to look. So I need to add some more on my coffee mug. I really do. I need to add some more resist. Now look, that I like this because when I put my paint on there, it's going to fill in and look different and I like that. So, you know, you can go through and do that any way you want. It's looking good for me. All right. You like live? Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you guys like live, I'll continue going live. I love live too myself. I just wanna make sure that you guys like it too. So again, look, look how sloppy this is right here. And But that's part of the beauty of this. Really, it's part of the beauty. So trust me, when we paint over this, you're going to be like, wow, that's cool, Miss Meyer. That's mm -hmm. cool how that's like sinking in there because I've resisted in some areas and I have not in others. Now, I'm going to add some more to my coffee mug. Uh, I'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Sorry about that. We went out and walked the dogs yesterday in the cold. Uh, they probably got like eight walks yesterday. <laughs> Oh, they got a lot of walks yesterday. So I was outside in the cold with the dogs yesterday. And yeah, yeah. Anybody else getting a lot of dog walks in? I know my dogs are not going to like this very much when we go back. Oh my goodness. They are uh, being spoiled rotten. Okay, so in my coffee cup, I want to stay away from that pinky purpley thing. And, you know, I want to use a, a color that's going to give it um, some pop. So against the pink would be like greens because it's opposite on the color wheel. Again, the complementary color. So I might add some green in here. I'm going to actually use green paint. So never mind. I'm going to add some blue. How about blue? My hands getting tired. Your hands getting tired? I know. Hands can get tired. It's okay. Oh, yeah. I'm. Thank goodness I am not your music teacher. <laughs> All right, guys. So I might just go around and do a little double juicy around my triangle. There we go. Again, not worrying about it being sloppy. Again, we want to resist. And, you know, we don't want this just to look like a big green mug. So we're going to resist there. Resist. Resist. All right, I'm going to do the same thing on the handle, put some blue. Maybe I'm going to color these in blue. There we go. I like that idea. Again, don't fill them all the way up with color, too. See, like, how I'm not filling them all the way up in color so I can get some green there? And if you fill them all the way up in color, that's fine, too. So now I might put some blue here. 
Again, leaving some room for that green to come through. Awesome, awesome. Again, coloring in your mug. And on my saucer, I might put some blue here. Again, leaving, and you know, I'm doing like a little swirly motion there so that I can get some green coming through because I'm gonna paint my mug green. I'm gonna paint my tiles purple. And then I'm gonna paint my background yellow. So that's what I'm gonna do. So there's that. Again, that looks pretty cool. And then you know what? I might put some black here. I've got my little black crayon and I just might put some black on my mug. And then if you guys wanna start working on your background, I did polka dots. I used like a light um, turquoise color because I'm gonna use yellow. So I used, and I don't know if I can find it today. All right, so I there's my turquoise that I've got. And so what I'm gonna do in the background while I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna create a pattern. And remember with your dots or your circles, they don't have to be perfect. But again, if you have two over here, you know, you might wanna show two over here on this side, and then you can create like a pattern going up. Again, they can be fun, and they don't have to be all the way colored in, just showing you how I'm creating those dots that kinda of go across. Again, you don't have to do dots, you can do whatever you want. Like when it goes behind the mug. We need to color the coffee in as well. Oh yes, well we're gonna use paint for the coffee. Okay. Yep, we're gonna color our coffee in as well. We're gonna use paint for that. Again, this is just what we're doing to set up so that we can resist. And if you wanna do a double juicy around these circles, you can. Now, when you get to your steam, you still gotta put your color in there. So look, it hides behind. Do you see what I'm saying, guys? Look, so you kinda wanna just you know figure out how to put those dots in there. Trust me, if you don't do it perfect, nobody's going to notice. Nobody's going to notice, I promise you. And my steam is on the right. Again, doing some cute dots all the way up. I'm just showing you what to do here. Uh, see how that one kind of matches that one? So I'll have that match that. And then again, I'm not filling them all the way in with color because I want some yellow to shine through there. Now, if you don't want yellow shining through, because that's what I'm going to use for my color, um, whatever color you want to do on your background, again, it's your choice. And we are running over an hour. Poor guys. I'm sorry, guys. You know, this takes me so, you know, it's hard to go live and get everything done. And this is the hardest project we have of the week. But I think it's also really cool. I like cool. this one. So look, I even made a mistake there, but I'm just gonna go ahead. You can sometimes erase a little bit of crayon off if you get it warm enough with your eraser. You can pull off some crayon, but not much. The paint will go over it, no big deal. Starting to see spots, <laughs> I love it. Again, this is where you can just have fun and be creative. Love it, love it. All right. Again, going through this middle and finding areas where you can create some circles there so it looks like you actually have your wallpaper there. And that can be the tricky part. All right. So as we go through, you know, I hope you guys are creating different things in your background too. So while I'm waiting for you guys, I'm going to double juicy with green around that. You do not need to double juicy. You do not need a double juicy, but I'm just going to take some green and add some green. We're not doing this on Friday. Also, someone asked to see mine again. Yeah. So here's Lindsay's right here. That's beautiful, Lindsay. I love how you did the resist where it's going to actually show up right there. That's really pretty. Really pretty. Love it, love it. Lindsay did great. So, yeah, um, if you want me to do something on Friday, I can. But I was thinking about after spring break while we're doing this together, um... You know, I, I've been looking and researching, and I would love to, and I know I said at the beginning, let's draw together, but I would love to do some other projects that would require different things like yarn and foil. Um, 
and I will let you know what you would need, like cardboard, yarn, and foil, and Sharpies. Um, I don't know how many people would need supplies like that. I am able to get into my art room one more time on the 15th. So, like, if you need things, we could do, like, a porch pickup um, at my house. If you would need things, let me know, and I will try to get them to you. I also have lots of people that are willing to buy things and have them shipped to your home if you need them. You just need to let me know what you need. Um, but, like, I don't even have yarn, so I even asked a neighbor. I went out of my Facebook page and I asked a neighbor in my neighborhood I said does anybody have yarn and she's like yep I do and I'm like oh my gosh I'll pay you back as soon as I can she's like no big deal don't worry about it you can have it I'm like wow um so I noticed right now that there's a lot of people being very kind to everyone else and so I think we're almost close to getting ready to paint guys so this is so easy especially for beginning painters because really you just need to there's really not much, uh, like normally when I teach you how to paint, I say, okay, kids, we're going to go through and we're going to, you know, teach you how to load your brush today. Lindsay, I'm going to let you borrow this after I'm okay. done. Okay. So if you have a big paint brush, so now I'm ready to just kind of paint in here. Look what happens. Isn't that cool? It's like magic. Look at it resisting. Isn't that cool? If you are using copy paper, you just go over it one time now, it's going to be lighter as it's closer to you and darker as it goes back. So you're going to have darker back in here. See that? Ooh, look at that. That's so cool. And I love that resist. Now, if you have to get into small areas, you might want to get a smaller paintbrush and paint. But be careful. Try not to go in your mug. Oh, look at that. How fun is that? Look at it resisting. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? You, it's really cool when you see it starting to resist against your crayon and just kind of fill in those pockets. It's almost like magic. Art can be magical in a way. It really can. It's so therapeutic. It really is. So therapeutic. Look at that filling up. Oh, I love those dark pockets. I might add a second coat. If you're on copy paper, don't add a second coat until your first coat dries. Do you hear me? Do not. And look, so I'm going to keep those darker in the back. And as I move up, I'm going to, so if you want it darker, less water, more paint. Okay. If you want it darker, less water, more paint. And again, we're just going to go ahead and fill this up. And as you get up to here, I'm going to add more water without the paint and just go across nice and neat. And I will have to darken it up because I if made. If you don't have paint, you guys can. Um, who said that they don't have paint? Watercolor. Okay, so if you don't have watercolor paint, you could get food coloring and you could mix some food coloring with some water and that will work. You could take an old Crayola marker, cut it open with a with knife, and we have a video that shows you how to make uh, watercolor paints from old Crayola markers. They're really easy, aren't they, Lindsay? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have watercolor paint, you could also take uh, some berries from your refrigerator, like blueberry. Um, and smush them up and add some water to them. Uh, strawberry, or not strawberries, blueberries and raspberries, raspberries or berries. blackberries you could use. Asked or see. you could use coffee. There's Lindsay's cup right there. You could use coffee for brown. Um, you could use green tea. I mean, get creative, guys. Let's get let's get creative. <laughs> Again, this is a little bit darker than I would like there, so I'm just going to go ahead and darken that up with a second coat. There we go. And so now you can see where I did those, you know, crazy lines before where it looked like I was being super sloppy. It You can't tell now, can you? It looks cool. It just looks so fun. It looks really fun. And again, I'm doing a quick second coat. Again, if you're using copy paper, you need to let it dry before you do a second coat or you're going to rip it and you're going to be sad. So we're using nice, thick drawing paper, 100-pound drawing paper, which is kind of equivalent to cardstock. And so it can accept more paint on it. So once you get done with this and you get that done, if you have, you know, a... a smaller paintbrush at your house. I'm going to go ahead and start with my coffee cup and I'm going to actually put green on there. Oh, that's cool. 
what oh isn't that fun yeah and what I'm gonna do is just go over my whole coffee mug even on where I did all that resist remember where I did the ooh look at that where I didn't do all the white and the white's popping out now isn't that fun oh I love it resist is fun this is called a resist there we go and I'm just gonna start painting my mug in and then if you get too much paint on an area like this Square looks like it's a little bit too dark for me. I'm just trying to pull some of that color off that square. That's fine. Doesn't matter, really. I could always add water to it later to pull it off, too. Um, and then just start painting your coffee mug. Oh, look at that. Resist. I'm using a smaller paintbrush now. Again, darker on the edges or the sides as it goes back in space. And then lighter as it gets up towards the front. Again, we don't need to be perfect on this, guys. This is just... A fun resist. There we go. And then painting the rest of this cup all the way up. And then I want to put hot cocoa in mine. So I'm going to use my brown. Or you could use actually coffee. Or you could use tea. Right? Mm -hmm. Or you could go get mud outside if you don't have coffee <laughs> or tea. I think everybody pretty much has coffee or tea. Yeah. Yeah. At home. Brew a cup of coffee and paint with it. That's actually one of my favorite things to do. Yes. And we paint with coffee at our art studio at school, too. I have a lot of coffee yeah. paintings in my house. Awesome. So there's my mug. Don't forget to get that rim up on the top. Right there. Nice little rim. Perfect. And then I'm just going to clean my paintbrush out, get some brown in, and color in my cocoa or my coffee, whatever you want. There we go. That looks good, Lindsay. Let me show you Lindsay's real quick. Lindsay's looking really pretty. We're losing. There we go. Pretty, pretty. And then last but not least, just take whatever you have and... I'm going to use yellow on the top of mine. I'm going to clean my paintbrush out because it looked a little dirty. I just take a paper towel, wipe it off, clean it out, and then just yellow on the top. Just go for it. Again, you're just having fun with this using resist. What's so great about this is that when you go over that white, you can see. So cool. You can see. Isn't that cool, Lindsay, where the white oh, yeah, steam? Yeah, really cool. You get the white steam there. And that's basically it, guys. I would love to see your finished products. I'm not going to go ahead and... Uh, I'll go ahead real quick and finish this up for you guys, the people that are here and watching. Tomorrow, we're making our Easter eggs. Be careful when you're painting, too, that you don't get your colors next to each other. If you do, clean out your paintbrush. Um, I would love to see these online. Again, I've had a really great time drawing with you. I can't Thank wait. You Thank you for coming out and drawing with us again. I love going live with you guys that are willing to come live with me. Again, I understand that other people have Zooms at this time. There's a lot of teachers requiring you to be at Zoom meetings at 11. I get that. I hope you watch this afterwards. I've noticed that one video, What? how many people did we have watch? I can't remember. A lot, yeah. yeah. But hopefully this is making your heart happy too. I just hope you all stay safe out there and stay home and just love the ones you're with. And tomorrow, I can't wait for you guys to come draw with me. I can't wait to do the fun little spring drawing that we have ready. And here is my finished one from today. Again, ta-da, there's my coffee cup going back in space. And again... With time permitting, I would probably go back through and do another coat on that back. So, guys, thank you so much for coming out and drawing with Lindsay and I today. Thank we love you. you. Have a great day.